1870s, the wildest spot in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stopped at the east bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. This is Mesquite Canyon. Langtree ought to be a couple of miles in that direction. Oh, well, we might as well end back. We'll probably be here a day or two. That's music to my ears. I'm already sorry for the cattle that have to travel this trail. Fellas, just left some wood and get a fire started. Hey, what do you suppose that is? A mirage? Hey, put that thing away. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hi, boys. Lost or something? Don't think so. Isn't this Mesquite Canyon? Yep, one end of the other. Right over the hill there, a nice little community. Lang Tree. I own the store there. You look more like a preacher, does. <laughs> yeah, well, I reckon I am kind of a preacher, judge, doctor. Doctor? Well, not really. Just sort of a pill peddler and a kind of handy with castor oil. <laughs> I always carry these drugs and tonics along just in case. I just left the ranch back there where those kids got the fever. If we get more people out here, we'll have a real doctor, maybe. Maybe that'll be sooner than you think. In another month, they'll be driving thousands ahead of cattle north through this canyon. And hundreds of cowboys taking care of them. That's right. That's why we're here, sort of making a survey, you might say. You'll have to lay over here in this canyon for two or three days. You'll be swamped with business. Langtree, you sure about this? We wouldn't be here otherwise. See, I'm glad you told me so I can be prepared. <laughs> Pop in the store and see me, boys. Very well. You saw, said you were sort of a judge, too. Yeah. Bean's the name, Judge Roy Bean. Well, see you later. Come on, Kurt. Well, what kind of a judge do you suppose he is? A good one. I've heard about him for years. I don't think we'll have much trouble with him. We'll have a talk with him, sort of feel him out. Yeah, come on, let's get cleaned up. Got to make a good impression. Store? 
We'll even cut you in on the profits. Then you'll have plenty to retire on. Shucks, I'm too young for that, eh? I just put in a new stock. What would I do with nothing to do? Caught this fellow gambling, Judge. He's run a game over at Peterson's place. Looks like your partner. Where are the others? Man can't gamble by himself. These are local folks, Judge. There was Ralph Higgins and Bat Finnegan and... I don't care if my own father was there. You should have brought them all in. They're just as guilty of breaking the law as a stranger. Maybe more so. Yes, Your Honor. I'll pick them up. After we conclude this case, search the accused. What's your name? Brad Connors. I don't care where you live or how old you are. You heard the charges? Deputy's crazy. I didn't start it. You guilty or not guilty? Guilty. 110. 120. This court finds you $220 and places you on probation for one year. Case dismissed. Just take this back and give it to the people who lost it. Tell them I've all been fined for this court, and they're on probation. Now, about selling your store, Judge. No hurry for a decision. We'll be around for a while. Okay, well, don't waste your time. That was a stupid thing to do. Maybe it was a good thing. At least now we know exactly where the judge stands. Gives us something to work on. Come on, let's get busy. My name is Brewster, and I'm from the Attorney General's office in Austin. Mr. Brewster, this is Letty, my niece. How do you do? This is Jeff, our local deputy. How do you do? I've been sent here to ask a few questions, Judge. Well, I guess you two want to talk business. I'll see you later. We don't need to leave on that account, Jeff. No secrets around here. <laughs> I've got some things to do, Judge. Uh, I'll come right to the point, Judge. Uh, I've been sent down here to check and report to the Capitol on the records of your court. Your books, uh, fines collected, how dispersed, and all the details connected with running the court. Am I hearing right? Oh, it's something new, but I'm sure you won't object. Object? I'll do more than object. I've run this court the way it's run for years, and I ain't going to change. Nobody said anything about a change. But you can't check my records, because they're up here. Same goes for the fines. We're a long way from civilization out here, Mr. Brewster. What little money we've got, we want kept here. It's not your money. Judge. Nobody knows that better than I do. It belongs to the people here, not somewhere in a big city. I'm only doing my job. And I'm doing mine, if you leave me alone. I was hired to be a judge, not a bookkeeper. You can go back to Austin and tell them that. Uncle Roy, please don't lose your temper. Mr. Brewster, why don't you let me talk to the judge about this? Because there's nothing more to say. Goodbye, Mr. Brewster. I'm afraid there is, Miss Bean. From the report I'll be forced to make, I'd say there's a good chance that Judge Bean will be removed from office and tried for malfeasance in office. He tried? I'm almost certain of it, Judge. Isn't there something else we can do? Yes, yes, there is. Personally, because I respect Judge Bean, I'd suggest he write a letter of resignation, saying, 
Well, uh, naming old age as his reason for resigning. Old age? Why, I can whip three like you right now. You try to reason with him, I'll, I'll be at the boarding house. Go oh, ahead, yeah, try me. You can't prove anything but that I'm honest. Oh, Roy, they can prove one thing Mr. Brewster said. There hasn't been any record of any case ever tried here. I gotta take a walk, see if I can cool down. Where's my hat? It's on your head. I'm worried, Letty. Suppose something could have happened to him? No, here's your coffee. He's just walking it off. You can't blame him, Jeff. It's been a terrible shock. He couldn't stand a trial. It'd kill him. Oh, you don't know Uncle Roy like I do. He's no quitter. He'd fight for what he believes in right to the Supreme Court. But I'll never find another judge like him, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I kept your dinner warm, Uncle Roy. It's getting late, honey. You better get some sleep. All right, I will. Good night. Good night, Jeff. I heard what happened, Judge. I'd sure like to be some help. Good night, Jeff. Judge Bede's face when he got the news. Yeah, I'd love to have seen that. If I'm any judge of judges, I'll have his resignation by tomorrow night. I'm going to wear his gavel like a watch job. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds good, but what if he checks with Austin? Oh, he'd have to ride fast to the Pony Express to get to Austin by tomorrow night. I've got all the forged credentials we need to convince the judge he's through. But tomorrow night, we'll have Lankry in the bag. Mason's twin brother. 
I've got a hunch it is, Mason. Don't be in too big a hurry about that resignation, Judge. I'm going to talk to Mr. Brewster. Well, yeah, thanks, Jeff. I'm afraid you're wasting your time. Maybe. Maybe not. Come on, Uncle Roy. Stop worrying. Get a little sleep. Cleared out of here. Get out of here before you get into trouble. Haven't you got things mixed up? What's this all about? Looks like you're gonna be the judge's first case for today. Young man, I'll I'll report this to Austin. You'll be fired. Safe. Start head with Judge Bean's place. Stay in front of me, you won't get hurt. Shot him. I didn't. I was with him at the time. 
Could have been anybody. You know how it is. Why are you worried? This sort of makes it easier for you. Got your rival out of the way. I'm leaving this outfit. Mind telling us why? Why waste your time and mine? We got a little time to spare. Let's hear it. All right, let's put it this way. I just suddenly remembered a few things I forgot. Let's make sense. No more riddles. I'm in trouble, all right. Nothing you know about. I'm wanted. <laughs> well, <laughs> lottie duh. Who isn't? Well, they're moving in on me. Back at Judge Bean's store, there's a wanted post with my face on it. I'll soon there'll be hundreds of men pushing through here, and somebody's going to spot me. We're a long way from the law out here. We won't be for long. Uh, still sounds like a riddle to me. Probably. But I'm getting out of the country. From San Francisco south to Panama. If you think there's going to be a three-way split, you're crazy. I don't want a dime for me, therapy. Just do me a favor and forget you ever saw me. That'll be easy. I never did figure you were right for this outfit. I still don't understand you, Mason. You're leaving us with a fortune. Well, maybe it's worth it. Now that you're checking out, do you mind telling us what you're wanted for? No, I don't mind. I was a doctor. I refused to testify against a friend. Well, that's the right attitude, Mason. We're proud of you. We won't testify against you either. About what? Killing a deputy. You still own one-third of that charge. There wasn't any killing. I removed a bullet from that boy's back. He'll be around a day or two. What, are you crazy? He found out about Brewster and us. He knows about the plan. Is he conscious? He won't be for a while. Let's take a ride. I think you were right, Mason. It is time that you checked out. And don't be here when we get back. Here's your change, Mrs. Asher, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Asher. Did Mrs. Asher get her safety pins? Yeah, I packed them. Where did we leave off? Um, 47. 47. 48, 49, 50, 51, 2, 3, 4, 55. Looking for these? Hello, folks. Hi. Just dropped in to see how the deputy is. That's very thoughtful of you. He's resting comfortably, thanks. Did he uh, have a chance to say who he thought did it? No, not a chance. It's too bad. I'd better leave you two. I have some soup on the stove for Jeff. Well, I hope you've been behaving yourself, son. I'm trying to, Judge. Those two up. Goodbye, Mr. Mason. I mean, Doctor. Sorry about the way I acted. Well, I don't blame you, Jeff. How was you to know that I like to be around Miss Letty because she's so much like my own daughter? Your daughter? Well, I certainly consider that a compliment. Well, that's a compliment for her, too. Goodbye, both of you. Goodbye. Goodbye. How did you get them locked up, Judge? Yeah, we got that fellow Brewster, too. Hey, Mason, about that poster. I know I'm still judging all that, but we didn't see it. Well, maybe you didn't, but I did. And I'm through running away. I was afraid to testify in court for afraid of ruining somebody. But now I'm going back and face the music. Thanks, anyway. You know I figured you'd say that. Here's a statement signed by Judge Roy Bean. I think it'll have quite a bit of influence. Thank you, Judge. If you ever want a new place to settle down, now don't forget Langtree. He's growing. I won't. <laughs> Too bad. 
glad we haven't got more men like that. Stay. 